Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the laminar and turbulent flow regimes. So we'll just take a quick look at the flow conditions and the velocity boundary schematic on a flat plate. This will allow us to determine and see the transition between the laminar and the turbulent flow and we can get an idea of the characteristics. So the flow conditions have a significant effect depending on the surface friction and the convection transfer rates. So here what we are going to assume is that we have a completely flat, smooth plate. So this would be the ideal scenario. In reality, there would be a slight roughness to this, also known as the relative roughness. Now this is an essential step in the treatment of any convection problem to determine whether or not the boundary layer is laminar or turbulent. So this forms part of our heat transfer course and but it also follows part of our fluid dynamics and mechanics course. Because here we're talking about the velocity profiles, so that's the U infinity, but you can also have a temperature profile. Because remember that the, the flow regime will determine the rate of heat transfer. If we have laminar flow, then the rate of heat transfer is less than that of in the turbulent region. Now the boundary layer development on the flat plate between the difference between the laminar and turbulent flow can be seen here. So U infinity is the, the velocity of the fluid away from the plate. So as we travel further and further away from the plate, we tend towards U infinity. That means that the, the velocity is constant. Now right at the plate, if we start here, so from this point here to about here, we have the laminar region. Now this is a value of x, and we'll, we'll talk about this xc in just a second. But from here, what we're saying is we have completely flat and streamlined u infinity so there is no we have perfectly streamlined flow when we touch our flat plate then what begins to form is our boundary layer and that's what this layer is here so if we follow this all the way across then our flow is still and it remains streamlined but it begins to grow and what we have is a part of friction here so at this part of the plate the velocity is almost zero. Now there is a, a special function in fluid dynamics whereby we have the no slip velocity so that means that the fluid adjacent to the flat plate so if this was our flat plate then we have a layer of fluid that's adjacent to the flat plate whereby the velocity is zero so we call that the no slip velocity. Now, that means that this profile, so this red line here, is the magnitude of the speed, or the velocity of the fluid. So you can see here that as we tend away from the flat surface, we get an increase in the fluid velocity up to U infinity. Now, as we travel further away from this point, then what we can see is we end up at the transition region. Now the transition region wouldn't necessarily be as big as this. The transition region is, there's a bit of ambiguity as to the location um, as to where it starts and ends. So it just depends on your university's tolerances. But for us, we were around 2,300 to 2,500 value of Reynolds. Now after the transition region, we end up in the turbulent region. And this is where we begin to form eddies. So this is these semicircles and almost full circle arrows. Now what happens is the turbulent region has complete eddies. So we have a very, very violent flow. So we have vortices forming. We still maintain a buffer layer. So we still, at the flat plate, we still have a slightly uh, laminar system. But this is known as the viscous sublayer. So again, it still has the same profile, just on a highly magnitude level. So we have a high, high exponential uh, profile here, because the speed, of course, as the laminar transitions into turbulent, turbulent increases the rate of the flow, and it also increases the rate of the, uh, the heat transfer. So you can imagine if this was hot, that these eddies will transfer the heat much quicker, to the surrounding and the body of the fluid.
So that's a general idea for this velocity boundary layer development on the flat plate. Now we'll just take another explanation in a little bit more detail for the laminar boundary layer. So the fluid flow is highly ordered and it's possible to identify the streamlines along with the fluid particles. The boundary layer thickness grows and the velocity gradients of y equals zero decreases in the stream y's as x increases. So we've seen that, that the y value increases as the x value increases as well. So the local surface shear stress, this is tau s, will also decrease with increasing x because our boundary layer is beginning to grow. So therefore our surface shear stress will begin to decrease because we won't have the same um, volume of the fluid reaching and touching the, the, the body of the plate. Now this is a highly ordered behaviour and it continues until the transition zone which is reached across whereby this is where we've seen the XC. Now we'll look at XC in just a second. But the conversion from laminar to turbulent flow occurred at the point of XC. And then this is where the characteristics of the laminar flow change into the characteristics of the turbulent flow. Now in the fully turbulent boundary layer, what we have is the flow is highly irregular and it's characterized by the random dimensional motion of the relatively large particles of the fluid. So we have good, good mixing within the boundary layer and it carries high speed fluid towards the solid surface. And therefore it will move fluid further into the free stream, i.e. the U infinity. Now much of the mixing is promoted by the streamwise vortices called streaks or also known as eddies. And these are generated intermittently near the flat plate where they rapidly grow and begin to decay. Now in many cases the laminar turbulent flow conditions can both occur with the laminar section preceding the turbulent section. For either condition and the fluid motion is characterised by the velocity components x and the y axis. Fluid motion away from the surface is um, basically it slows down for the fluid near the wall until the boundary layer grows in the x direction. So that's where we're talking about the no slip velocity. Now xc, this is known as the critical Reynolds number because the critical Reynolds is essentially the point at which the distance in the plate, so we had our plate like so, then say this was, so this is the value of x uh, and this is the value of y, so something like this. Then from the beginning to this point here, this would be xc, this is called x critical, and this would give us the critical Reynolds value, i.e. When does the laminar flow region end and where does the turbulent region begin? So for the flat plate, the characteristic length of L is if the Reynolds number is small, then the inertial forces are significant relative to the viscous forces. So that's where the disturbances can be dissipated and the flow remains laminar up to a certain value of Reynolds, whereby the inertial forces then become sufficient and can amplify and trigger mechanisms for the transition to the turbulent flow. And this transition is denoted by the distance xc, which gives us our critical Reynolds number. So again, we still use the same equation for Reynolds, it's just that this time we're going to have an xc here. So there is an approximation for the uh, critical Reynolds number, and that's roughly 5 times 10 to the 5. Now this has been measured experimentally over several years, so that's why we can take this as a standard. Now, what we can then do is determine the value of xc. So within our system, we know what the critical Reynolds number is. So therefore, in our system, if we can measure it, then we can use this equation, rearrange for the value of xc, and that will tell us in our profile where the laminar region ends 
and where the turbulent region begins. And that's a very, very useful uh, tool because we can then manipulate our system, say we want to promote heat transfer. We know the distance that we would have to reach in order to achieve turbulent flow, which would then increase the rate of heat transfer. Or vice versa, we could also increase the rate of mass transfer. So again, you can just see these profiles um, in a little bit more detail here. Now, this is done under partial differentials, but again, this is just a comparison of the laminar and turbulent velocity boundary layer profiles for the same free stream velocity. So again, we have this no slip velocity, whereby the y equals zero and the partial differential of du by dy is zero as well. Now, just a final summary of the look of the boundary layer thickness and the heat transfer coefficient. In that, we can see that for our laminar flow up to Xc, so this is our critical Reynolds, if we draw up, we can see that as from the beginning to the Xc, our heat transfer coefficient is decreasing. So it's beginning to get worse and worse and worse up to the XC point. When we reach through the transition period, then the rate of heat transfer coefficient will rapidly increase up to a maximum and then begin to level off. However, it won't be as extreme as it in the turbulent region than in the laminar region. Now again, our thickness for the boundary layer, we can see that it starts off very small, it begins to increase, and then once we reach the critical Reynolds and we transition from laminar to turbulent, we can see that the thickness of the boundary layer increases significantly, and these will come to a point of intersection eventually. However, this is just for an isothermal flat plate. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful in understanding the velocity boundary layer for laminar and turbulent flow. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we'll see you in another video.